The Carolina Panthers have a brand new play caller, but will it make any sort of a difference? We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Wednesdays I answer your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions either at me or DM me over on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in for tomorrow's edition of the weekly Wednesday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Carolina Panthers have a brand new play caller as Frank Reich has finally handed over play calling duties to offensive coordinator Thomas Brown, who will make his debut as the offensive play caller during the Week 8 matchup against C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans. But we'll get into all of that a little bit later here on the show's first let's go ahead and talk about the good the bad and the ugly as we do on every tuesday edition of the show following a game and get into what went right what went wrong and what was just plain awful for the carolina panthers against the miami dolphins and their 42 to 21 loss on sunday down there in south florida let's start off with the positive with the good and the first one i have to say is bryce young things weren't Great week one, the two interceptions on back-to-back passes, really the same looking pass. It wasn't on back-to-back passes consecutively, but it looked like the exact same throw, the same mistake we saw from Bryce Young. And then week two against the Saints, now his receivers were open. He struggled, took a lot of sacks in that game, was out against Seattle, came back into Minnesota. It looked better, but still wasn't ideal then you saw the Panthers be able to pick up some sort of momentum late in the game against Detroit and they carried it over into the first half scoring touchdowns on their second and third drives there in the first quarter as they had a 14 nothing lead you're starting to see the signs of Bryce Young showing that he can be not just a competent quarterback in the NFL but a good quarterback and dare I say franchise quarterback in the long-term answer here In Carolina, he was 23 of 38 for 217 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions, did take four sacks, and had an 85.1 passer rating on the day. It's not outstanding. It's not, you know, the greatest numbers, but it's better. It's getting better week after week. The more he plays, the better he looks, and the more comfortable he appears to be. And the Panthers talked about in a report came out throughout the week last week that they wanted to simplify the offense. They wanted to take some things off of Bryce Young's plate. And they understand that, yes, he's very good at processing. He understands the offense. He is mature beyond his years. But so far, you have not seen the Bryce Young that a lot of us thought we were going to see when the season started off, that it's taken a bit of time. And I told y'all to be a little bit patient with the offense and how the offense has been a lot worse than we thought it would be. But Bryce Young is getting better week to week. And now with the change of Thomas Brown being the play caller, we'll see how much better he can be in the final 11 games of the season here for the Carolina Panthers. But Bryce Young, his continued development was one of the good things out of the game yesterday against the Dolphins. Adam Thielen has been everything you hope that he would be when the Carolina Panthers signed him back in March. 11 receptions on 13 targets for 115 yards and a touchdown. Look at DJ Chark, Hayden Hurst, and Jonathan Mingo. The three of those combined had 12 targets. Adam Thielen is clearly wide receiver one here in Carolina. He's clearly the one that Bryce Young trusts the most in the wide receiver court, which is a problem. They need to find maybe two other guys as good as Thielen, who Bryce Young trusts, And then this offense could really be something here in Carolina moving forward with Bryce Young as a quarterback and Thomas Brown as a play caller. 
but they're a ways away from that so far. I would like to see, and hopefully throughout the bye, when they go through South scouting and look at some of their tendencies, that they're able to find a way to get DJ Chark and Bryce Young back having that connection that they had down in Spartanburg at Wofford College during training camp. Hopefully Hayden Hurst, who was a top target week one, can be someone who needs to get targeted way more than he has over the last couple of weeks. He only got three targets on Sunday. And then same with Jonathan Mingo. Let's get him more involved as he continues to grow and develop with Bryce Young also as a rookie. Uh, another good thing, Chuba Hubbard. Chuba clearly is the Panthers' best running back through the first six games of the season. Miles Sanders, I'm going to offer him some grace. He had a groin back in the preseason, did not perform in the preseason at all. Then he came out week one, had a bad fumble, didn't look great, had a costly fumble also in Detroit, and he's been on the injury report the last three weeks. Two weeks prior, had the groin, same injury he had back in the preseason that cost him, and then last week missed out with a shoulder injury. Until he gets healthy, I don't see how he's going to be the best option for the Carolina Panthers. And when healthy, will he be the best option for the Carolina Panthers? I don't know. But right now, what I do know is Chuba Hubbard is the best option for the Carolina Panthers at running back. 19 carries for 88 yards, 4.6 yards per carry and a touchdown. Now, the majority of those yards came in the first quarter. Then, for whatever reason, like I went over yesterday, the Carolina Panthers decided to go away from the run. Well... If they want to stick with the run with Thomas Brown, a former running back, mind you, and also tight end coach. So Hayden Hurst, Chuba Hubbard could be heavily involved in the offense moving forward. Fingers crossed. They need to involve Chuba Hubbard as their lead back. He has looked like the most explosive back. He's been their best back through six weeks of the season. And coming into week eight against the Texans, I want to see a heavy dose of Chuba Hubbard, whether Miles Sanders is healthy or not. Hubbard needs to be out there helping this team potentially win football games. Another good thing, the first quarter, the Panthers were up 14-0. They had 10 first downs to the Dolphins, one. They had 139 yards to the Dolphins, 42. They had 63 rushing yards to the Dolphins, zero. And they possessed the ball for 11 minutes and one seconds, while the Dolphins had the ball for three minutes and 59 seconds. The bad, though, the rest of the game, <laughs> the Panthers ended up uh, going scoring seven points while the Dolphins scored 42 points. And those seven points were on a Troy Hill pick six, which for a moment in time was very important to a lot of people out there that had the Dolphins at 14 and a half, or maybe people had the Carolina Panthers covering, but the Dolphins went down the field, got another touchdown, ended up winning the game 42 to 21. So the first quarter was good, but the rest of the game, obviously bad. The Panthers had 11 first downs after having 10 in the first quarter. The Dolphins had 22 after having one in the first quarter coming on the final play where there was a big pass play to Tyreek Hill, who was just an absolute menace on the field once again. And he is looking like he could be setting records in the National Football League this year. And of course, is on his way to being an all pro and maybe a Super Bowl champion in Miami. The Panthers had 157 yards the rest of the game after having 139 in the first quarter. The Dolphins had 382 yards in the final three quarters after only having 42 in the first quarter and 45 rushing yards to the Panthers rest of the way after having 63 and the Dolphins had 162 rushing yards after having a goose egg in the first quarter the Dolphins the best rushing team in the NFL going up against the Carolina Panthers one of the worst rushing defenses in the NFL and it played out as the Dolphins ran away from the Panthers in the final three quarters of the game. Another bad LaVishka Chenault injury. Uh, the Carolina Panthers can ill afford to have another offensive skill position player go down. They never got to see Demir Bird as he had a hamstring and they had an injury settlement. Maybe he comes back once he's healthy and ready to go later on this season. We'll see. Um, but then Miles Sanders not playing. He hasn't been healthy. I understand fans are frustrated by the signing. Uh, no one hated it more than me. Never pay running backs, especially if they're not like McCaffrey. So. Don't understand why they did that. Hasn't worked out for them, but he is not healthy. Now, LaVishka Chenault, I'm not the biggest fan. I don't think very highly of him, but he does allow the Panthers to be a little bit more creative. He is a chess piece um, in this offense, and they utilize him on that fake punt. They use him in the run game. They use him as far as like a screens and try to just do different things. And he's been fairly effective. Now, has he been explosive? Has he been Debo Samuel? No, but LaVishka Chenault is someone who can help the Panthers win football games. And well, that's his job. So losing him to the high ankle sprain where he's carted off on Sunday is not great. Obviously, it's better news than I thought it was because originally they were saying it was a fibula injury. And then they were saying, and then I was thinking, oh, there it goes, broke his leg. After watching, I thought that was going to be the case. Not trying to be a Twitter doctor or YouTube doctor here, but that's what it looked like to me. But of course, I'm wrong. I don't have the MD and he ends up only having a high ankle sprain, which of course is not 
insignificant, probably going to miss a, a period of time. We'll see what the Panthers decide to do. Don't really need to make a sort of determination now heading into the buy, kind of wait after the buy week to see whether they want to put them on an IR. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Not quite sure, but that's obviously a bad thing. Now to the ugly. No pressure on Tua Tungavailoa. The Dolphins had the best passing offense. Tua came into the game leading the NFL in passing yards. They had to heat him up, and the Panthers did not. 32 times Tua Tungavailoa dropped back, and only one time was he hit. Zero sacks for the Carolina Panthers. We had talked about it. Brian Burns, Frankie Louvu, and company needed to find a way to get after Tua, and obviously that did not happen, and that allowed the Dolphins to do what? Ever they wanted on Sunday in that win. And another ugly. The Panthers are winless. They are 0 and 6. It's their worst start since 1998 when they start out 0 and 7. Back under head coach Dom Capers, who coincidentally is here in Carolina as a senior defensive staffer for the Panthers. Let's hope that that remains the only kind of link to that season as the Panthers, I believe, went 4 and 12 that year. Hopefully they can win more than four games. Currently, I look at Vegas. FanDuel has their over-under win total at four and a half. And the Panthers got through, I think, what was the toughest stretch of the season. Clearly, they're 0-6 with having four of their first six games on the road. with a rookie quarterback, a new offensive coaching staff, just new players on offense, and then all the injuries defensively. Just a perfect storm that's led to an 0-6 start. But what makes it worse for the Panthers, the NFC South has a ton of bad offenses. Hat tip to someone I saw put this out on Twitter. Um, I think actually it was Greg Almond, but another fan out there also uh, had mentioned this. Greg Almond, who covers uh, the NFC South for Fox Sports, former Bucks beat reporter. The Panthers are 23rd in scoring in the NFL. The Saints are 24th. The Bucks are 25th. The Falcons are 29th. They have the best offense among bad offenses in the NFC South. And they have not won a game. Meanwhile, the Falcons have won three. The Saints have won three. And the Bucks have also won three. The Panthers could have beaten the Falcons. Uh, not really the Saints. And they have not played the Bucks just yet. Best offense by scoring metrics in the NFL, uh, as far as in the NFC South, rather. And they have not won. But they have by far the worst scoring defense. The Saints are sixth. The Bucks are eighth. The Falcons are 14th. The Panthers are 31st. And a large part of that is J.C. Horn having not played. Uh, in the last five games, having missed Xavier Woods for the last three games, not having Von Bell out there on Sunday, Shaq Thompson being out for the rest of the season. Yeah, the defensive injuries have played a large role in why the Carolina Panthers are one of the worst scoring defenses defenses in the NFL. So that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the Panthers, 42-21 to 21 loss down in Miami. But the Panthers... Got some good news. At least the fans got some good news on Monday as Frank Reich is turning over play calling over to Thomas Brown. What does that mean for Carolina? Will it change things? Did Reich actually make this decision? It was a David Tepper that influenced it. We'll talk about all of that here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it? Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Whenever the game clock stops, that's time to order in with DoorDash. Order pizza, wings, soda, burgers, or even just buns on DoorDash and get it all delivered without missing the game. Score football season's best deals on groceries, restaurants, retail, and more. All of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery are on the app so you can shop everything you need to get game day ready. Stock up on your favorite appetizers and order all your tailgate gear on DoorDash. Then get ready to watch your team win. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. That's $50 off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms apply. Big news for the Carolina Panthers came out on Monday morning, and let's be honest, it wasn't really all that surprising as Frank Reich is set to hand over the play calling duties to offensive coordinator Thomas Brown. We talked about this on the show yesterday what needed to change moving forward well a lot but what obviously 
could change and would make sense as a change for the Carolina Panthers. Frank Reich being the head coach and no longer calling the plays and allowing Thomas Brown, who was hired to be the OC, who has been dubbed as a future head coach and a future player car in Carolina, being the OC for the Carolina Panthers. And that now has come. So it's not really a surprise to anyone, as fans have been calling for this since what? like week two, which is, hey, man, you guys are on it, but damn, man, y'all gave it no time at all. But after an 0-6 start going into the bye week, I looked at it. It made a lot of sense. Your team's no good. Thomas Brown is going to be the future play caller. Why not decide to have him and Bryce Young really build that rapport together moving forward the rest of the season? So, yeah, first off, as I've said, this was an obvious, simple change to make heading into the bye. I don't know what else you would want for the Panthers to do at this point in time. Like, I know people want to fire Scott Bitter. I don't know how that helps the team moving forward, but I do think that this can help the Carolina Panthers just prepare for the future with Thomas Brown as the play caller alongside of being the offensive coordinator, which he's been the last couple of weeks. Number two, the main objective for the remaining 11 games of the season is to develop Bryce Young. Since Thomas Brown was the future play caller, it makes sense to make the change now if you want Bryce Young to be comfortable. It makes sense just to have him listen to Thomas Brown in his headset and be able to build that relationship. Thomas Brown has been working with Bryce since they got here, and it only makes sense moving forward for that to be the main voice in his head. Obviously, Frank Reich is going to have a say in how things are going. He's going to complete. He's going to continue to have a relationship with Bryce Young. Obviously, Parks Frazier, the uh, passing game coordinator, will continue to have a relationship with Bryce Young. Jim Caldwell will. Josh McCown. But they just really need to have one central figure, and that needs to be Thomas Brown moving forward. So it's a good decision that those two in tandem can start to grow together because there's going to be some – bit of a learning curve for Thomas Brown now as a play caller for the first time at this level. And I would rather it happen now where the expectations are so low because here's another universe out there where Thomas Brown had called the plays for the first six weeks and the Panthers are as bad as they've been offensively. And you guys are calling for his head. Instead, I think Frank Reich in a way took some bullets for him, even if Frank Reich's offense wasn't very inventive and understand that Thomas Brown was a part of putting it together. But I think he's going to do a little bit Let's do some things differently, you would hope, moving forward. But he's able to take some of the pressure off of Thomas Brown to where now he can come in, he has the bye week, he can sit with Bryce, they can talk, they can self-scout, evaluate their tendencies, and then move forward into week eight with a better game plan starting then and throughout the rest of the 11 games moving forward. So I think it makes a lot of sense. If Bryce is your future, Thomas Brown's your future, and you're 0-6, go ahead, let the future be now. And number three, Thomas Brown is considered to be a future head coach. This is a really good spotlight for him to be able to get a head coaching job. We talk about it every offseason, who the guys are getting head coaching jobs typically. They're offensive coaches. Now, you saw D'Amico Ryan's get a coaching job in Houston, but he had a relationship with that coaching staff or that ownership group dating back to his playing days. Jan Jonathan Gannon, who helped the Eagles get to the Super Bowl as their defensive coordinator, he's out there in Arizona. He got that job, but I believe that was the last job that was available. Um, John Payton, offensive guy there in Denver, Shane Steichen, an offense guy uh, who's out there now in Indianapolis replacing Frank Reich. And of course, Reich, an offensive guy here in Carolina. But the big names we were talking about right now, you got Ben Johnson there in Detroit. He's an offensive guy. Um, there's talk, well, I guess Mike Caff is crying up, up there anymore since the Giants are terrible, but it tends to be offensive coaches. And we talk about minority coaches and what kind of opportunities they're getting in the NFL and the lack thereof as far as being a head coach. This will now allow Thomas Brown, who people believe is a very astute, sharp guy who will be a future head coach, to start building towards that and really build, building his resume and becoming even more of a leader within his organization. So a good opportunity uh, for him. And Frank Wright came out and said that, he cannot emphasize how excited he is for Thomas Brown. That he thinks there's a reason why at this age he's ascended to this position so quickly because you get around him for five minutes and you just know. So really good for Thomas Brown to be in this position. And in number four, you cannot tell me, and I know Frank Reich did tell us, and we'll get into more of his comments later on. Uh, you cannot tell me that David Tepper did not have 100%. You cannot tell me that there was he had no interest in influence in this. He might not have 100% influence, but you can tell me that David Tepper did not have influence into this decision. We talked about last week. 
Frank Reich re revealed a week ago that he and David Sapper have a conversation every Tuesday. And you could see how it's wearing on Frank Reich, where he's being micromanaged. And he did bring up that he's not going to micromanage Thomas Brown because he knows how that feels. Well, maybe he's going through it right now. And he went through it in Indianapolis with Jim Ursay, which begs the question, why would you take this job if you just got away from a crazy owner? And now you stepped into a situation where the owner is very active here in Carolina. But that's on Frank. And hey, God bless him. And he needs all the prayers he can get <laughs> because good Lord, I cannot imagine having to meet with David Tepper on a weekly basis, especially if we're not winning games. But him and David Tepper, they, they, they talked about their plan for Thomas Brown. And they talked about all of this. So you can't convince me that David Tepper didn't have some sort of influence in this decision. Go back to following the 2018 season when Ron Rivera decided that he was well after it was in the 2018 season where Ron Rivera ended up taking over play calling duties from God, was it Ron Washington? Nah, I can't remember whose who's name it was. Something Washington, I want to say it was a DC here in Carolina. The defense wasn't good late in that 2018 season when Cam's arms falling apart offensively and it changed play callers. It let Ron take over the defense. But after the season, David Seffer said, Hey, I want to keep you here because I'm focusing on building the business side of the organization. I want to run a three four. Because I'm more comfortable with that because that's what we did in Pittsburgh where they won Super Bowls. And I know you did that back when you were D.C. way back when in San Diego. So you, you can you can do that. And also I want you to call the place. David Tepper has already shown very early on in his ownership tenure that he will influence those kind of decisions. You cannot tell me that he did not at least play a role in this happening. They might have always pointed to the bye week as a time to do the natural transition but if the Panthers were rolling offensively, would that be the case? I, I don't know. But I feel like David Tapper, who was an active participant in all of this, had a say in them going out there and doing it. And Frank Reich says, this is not a reactionary move. This is all part of the plan. Sure, Frank. Sure. Dave had nothing to do with this. I agree with you 100%. Wink, wink. All right. On the other side, we'll come back and get into some of the quotes that Frank Reich had to say about the Carolina Panthers deciding or him deciding to hand over the play calling duties over to Thomas Brown here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. It's L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Carolina Panthers head coach Frank Reich opened up his Monday press conference confirming the reports that came out from Ian Rappaport that indeed Thomas Brown, the OC here in Carolina, will be the play caller moving forward starting out in week eight against the Houston Texans at home. Frank Reich saying it's always been a part of the plan, something Thomas and I discussed from the time that he was hired. I'm excited for this for Thomas. I'm excited for our team and our offense. Thomas is a stud. He's a great leader. He's a brilliant offensive mind. We have a lot of confidence in him. I think the timing is right. This has always been something, even from the beginning, that I talked with Mr. Tepper and Scott. From the beginning of the season, I thought that the bye week was going to be a checkpoint. Really been thinking hard about the last couple of weeks and kind of knew that it was leaning this way. Here we are, and I'm excited to turn it over to Thomas and know that he'll do a great job for our team. So, Frank Reich says the bye week was always a checkpoint. Is that the case? Had they been 0-6? One, one wonders, and he said that he had the conversation way back when trying to figure out who the coaching staff would be with David Tepper and with Scott Fitter on what the plan would be as far as the play caller. As we know, Frank Reich said he would be the play caller, and now at 0-6 heading into the bye week, that is no longer the case. So first off, he was asked why I changed play callers now. He just said uh, he thinks the bye, you get those two weeks where it's a little bit of, hey, let's regroup players, a lot of self-scout to see what their tendencies are and how they can tweak things. So he felt like it was a good time to kind of uh, figure things out for the next two weeks. He uh, said, why did Thomas Brown not 
called the plays originally when asked that. He said he didn't know Thomas before the year. And I think that's actually a pretty good reason, y'all. Like, if he doesn't know the guy, and this is all about, and Frank Wright came out uh, on his introductory press conference, and he said that he wants to get out of his comfort zone, that he's not going to just hire a bunch of his buddies, and he's gone out there, and he's done a good job of not doing that. Like, Parks Frazier, he, he officiated his wedding. Like, that was going to be something that was going to clearly happen. And his wife, Caroline, formerly known as Caroline Can, was the team reporter here uh, not too long ago in Carolina. So it's good homecoming for her and obviously for Parks, having a great relationship with Frank Reich and being play caller last year in Indy when Jeff Saturday took over as the interim head coach. Like, that's not surprising at all. And he could be the future OC, depending on how things go here long term with Frank Reich and Thomas Brown and his whole coaching staff, and of course, with Bryce Young. Um, so that's not a surprise. Jim Caldwell, that makes a lot of sense. Dom Capers, as like in way like it's cool, strange, funny, weird. Um, that's a good thing to get that kind of experience. But a lot of the other guys, like Jero Vero, he didn't like Jonathan Cooley being here. Like those are Vero guys. Like you think about um also uh Pete Hansen. That that that's a guy who came here because of a Jero Vero. Now there's relationships that he has with guys like Deuce Staley that date back to Philadelphia, where that's kind of his buddy in a way, but also makes sense for Deuce of his mother down there in Columbia want to be closer to her and the grace of Dan Campbell to let him off his staff. So it hasn't just been a bunch of his buddies. So it does make sense that, okay, yeah, you know, Thomas Brown, smart guy, love the interview with him. He interviewed for the coaching job here, interviewed coaching job, I believe that in Houston as well. Like that guy's a future head coach. And that's a guy I think can help me and can be a part of this brain trust in Carolina. But also I don't know him well enough to be totally comfortable with, you know, him securing my job security by being the play caller. So he wanted to take some time. And in Indy, you know, he had another play caller, but it was somebody he had worked with before. So, you know, play calling is still going to be collaborative, but he wanted to kind of get to know Thomas Brown better. Now, could he have gotten to know him better in the offseason? You could reasonably ask that, but he wanted to get into the season to see how they work together, see how things went before deciding, hey, here at the bye, let's turn it over. Now, a good question here that was asked is, hey, would this have happened? If you weren't 0-6 and, and Frank Reich, I think like a lot of us, uh, likes to believe that they would have done the right thing, even if the situation was different. He says, I believe uh, that's what we would have done either way. Uh, when he hired Thomas, he knew that it would happen fast. He said, I like to think that this is the best decision, no matter what our record is. So again, he would like to believe, had they been 0-6, had they been 4-2, and 6-0, and that Thomas Brown would take over the play calling duties now. Um but it was guys, just understand too. Like, had the Panthers been four and two or six and zero, oh, like especially they're six and zero, oh, that would have been a very strange headline. Frank Reich handing over play calling duties to Thomas Brown. You would be like, why? Everything's going great. Why change something? Because when things are good, you typically don't want to change it up. But when they're going bad, then yes, you're looking for changes. Maybe this is all true. It just seems hard to believe. That would have been the case had things been going well. Now, had they been three and three, then yeah, it would have made been a little bit more palatable in a in a terms of like, oh, they're five hundred, and yeah, Thomas Brown's going to be play car. Yeah, why not do it now? But you're six and zero. Oh, like, why change anything? Things are going great. So I don't know. Um, but that's what Frank Reich says that it would have been the decision no matter what. Now the big one is what role did David Tepper play uh, play in all this? And he says that you know we talk about it periodically as we've gone, uh, but this was one hundred percent my decision from start to finish. It may have been 50% your decision, but it was not 100%. I do not believe that. I do not believe it at all. David Tepper has already shown on multiple occasions that he will get what he wants. Didn't want Teddy Bridgewater. They went out and got a different quarterback. Ended up being a horrible decision. Uh, when it comes to this past year's draft, Stephen Holder, who we talked to on the show here back when the Panthers hired Frank Reich uh, way back in January, he covered Frank, of course, all those years in Indianapolis. He's the culture reporter for ESPN.com. He came out last week and talked about it. it was an open secret in the NFL that the owner, David Tepper, really wanted Bryce Young. You talk about that dinner they had down in Tuscaloosa where they asked Bryce, hey, what does your day-to-day -day look like throughout the week? And he went through every single day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second, and that's when they were really sold on him. And Nicole loved him. Dave loved him. And we talk about, you know, Peter King bringing it up all the time about how, hey, Frank Reich, hey, like he only has work quarterbacks a certain size. And it's not like Stroud was a guy that he would like. And even Stephen Holder had talked to Frank Reich at the owners meeting saying, hey, I know who you're going to take. You know, CJ Stroud has the accuracy, the leadership, everything that you wanted in a quarterback, everything that you dream of having a quarterback. And to get Bryce Young, 
That's not to say that Frank Reich doesn't like Bryce Young. And at the end of the day, didn't decide that, hey, Bryce Young is who I want more than um, CJ Stroud. But it's an organizational decision. And this is David Tepper's organization. David Tepper came out there and on draft night and said that Bryce Young gives him the opportunity to win multiple Super Bowls. Not a Super Bowl, but to win Super Bowls. You don't talk that brashly unless you had a big part in the decision to bring Bryce Young. So we have seen on multiple occasions David Tepper come out and make those kind of calls. And Rick, Rich Eisen, who I love, he came out and said the same thing last week that David Tepper, open secret, that David Tepper really wanted Bryce Young, that he had a say in all of that. And I think he had the say, the final call. And I think he had the final call on this one as well. They had the conversations dating back to when Rick was hired and they were figuring out the coaching staff. This is David Tepper's bunny. David Tepper financed Thomas Brown coming here, and he has these weekly meetings of Frank Reich. You cannot tell me that David Tepper did not be a big, did not was not a big player in this decision. He was, and he probably was the player, the driver in Thomas Brown now being the OC. Well, now being the really the true OC now he's being the play caller. Um, and okay, how is it going to change Frank Reich's day to day? He said not a lot. That he'll still be in a lot of meetings as far as the quarterbacks, and he'll take part in the game planning, which of course would make sense. But he's not going to micromanage him because uh, he knows what that feels like, and he knows because right now he's being micromanaged by the owner David Tepper, uh, right or wrong. And he says that he is not. He was open to not being the play caller back uh, starting in week one, uh, but it was depending on who they hired. So throughout the process, he. If he hired somebody he was more comfortable with, who he had knew, known, who was an experienced play caller, maybe he would have sat out and not been the guy week one, but they wanted to get into the season and see how things worked out. And this will also allow him to spend a little bit more time with the defense during games. It's not like he's going to go out there and, you know, say a lot, <laughs> but he will be able to focus in on other parts of the team on game day and not be completely locked in to just um, the offensive side of things. And he, Handed a couple weeks ago, apparently to Thomas Brown, that this uh, could be the time, the bye week. That so a couple like two weeks ago, we told him, hey, you know, it could be coming up. He didn't promise anything, but he did let him know this could be coming up. And that goes in line with him saying this was always the plan. And uh, he feels like the offense is starting to get into a rhythm and is looking forward to what they can do and continue to grow throughout the rest of the season. And he was also asked whether there be any other changes uh, made on the surface, uh, and he said no. And there was a follow-up. Will there be any other staff changes? He said no. So this is the staff that they have um, offensively, defensively, special teams-wise. No staff changes. Just the role that's changing is Thomas Brown is now the play caller. And that is the right decision. Whether Frank Reich made it or David Tepper made it or Nicole made it, it's the right decision for the Carolina Panthers. And he thinks that it can provide a spark and hopes that it will. Okay. So, again, if you uh, – <laughs> if he thinks it will provide a spark, does he – David, ever think that or you think that? I don't know. Uh, I know one final thing before we get out of here. Injury note, heading to the bye week, Austin Corbett, he is trending positively uh, to be able to play uh, week eight against the Texans. He has to be off of the uh, pup list completely. He has to be active by next Wednesday in order to be able to play at all this season. So, yeah, he'll be back. And then J.C. Horn is having a checkup with the doctor this week, which will determine their next steps with him. And he is eligible to come off of uh, IR, at least to be transitioned out of IR. Then he would have 21 days. So the Carolina Panthers cannot begin that process until they really know where things are trending with J.C. Horn and his injury. So there is what Frank Reich had to say on Monday following the Carolina Panthers 42-21 to 21 loss down in Miami as they're 0-6 heading into the bye. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours, Julie, Julian Council. Again, y'all subscribe or follow free over on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where tomorrow I'll be back once again to answer your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me over on Twitter to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Wednesday.